let's take a moment to think about how we describe an expression in words. Now, there are two different ways we can describe an expression. Remember that an expression names a number. So, one way we can think of an expression is as naming something. So we can describe an expression using a noun, or more often, a noun phrase. There are certain common ways that we have of describing expressions. And I'm just going to put a big list up on the screen, and then we're going to take a look at it. Take a moment to pause the video and read through this list. And then I'm going to point out some specific things about it. Okay, the most important thing to be aware of in looking at this list is that in division and subtraction, order matters. In particular, we see that in subtraction, these two descriptions reverse the order that the symbols are written in, in the expression. So 3 less than a number, that means x minus 3, not 3 minus x. Other than that, all of the descriptions of subtraction and division name the numbers in order. And of course, order doesn't matter in addition or multiplication. Also be aware that we can describe division by talking about a fraction. Technically speaking, a third of a number is using the same kind of language as we are down here. When I say a third of a number, I technically mean one-third times x. But of course, that's the same as x divided by 3. To see that, just write the x over 1. So, be aware of order mattering in subtraction and division. Be aware of the fact that we can use that fraction language to talk about division sometimes. All right, let's see an example of this in action. Let's say we have an expression and we want to describe it. Let's say we want to describe the expression 7 minus q. All right, q is our variable. This is subtraction, so I'm going to look at the subtraction part of my list. q is my variable, so I'm going to say a number for q. Um, the difference of a number and 3 was x minus 3, so this is the difference of 7 and a number. Right? First number comes first, second number comes second. 7 minus a number. First number comes first, second number comes second. Okay, now this one's going to reverse the order. So a number subtracted from 7. Okay, two more. Uh, this less than phrasing again reverses it. A number less than 7. Um, and okay, now this last description is in, is in the right order again. 7 decreased by a number. How do we do this with a more complicated expression? All right, I'm only going to give one description of this next example. Let's say we want to describe this complicated expression. All right, we have 4 and then x plus 3 in parentheses and then minus 5. To describe a complicated expression, we start by naming the last operation we would do in order of operations. 
So in this example, the last operation we would do is this subtraction. So the first thing I'm going to say has to do with subtraction. Now, I notice that uh, the thing being subtracted is very simple, 5. So I'm going to just start by saying 5 less than. OK, 5 less than what? All right, so I've handled subtracting 5. What I'm left with now is this sub-expression. I need to describe that. 5 less than what? This is multiplication. So I'm going to say this is a product. Five less than the product. What's it a product of? A product of, well, the first number is four. And the second number is I need to describe this x plus 3. Um, I think it'll be easiest to read if I say 4 and the sum of a number and 3. So notice the order in which I said things was the opposite of the order of operations. I named the last operation first and then described what we were doing that operation to. Now there's another way that we could describe an expression. We can also describe an expression as a story about what happens to x. So I'm going to do the same example that way, and we'll look at the difference. In order to give a narrative, I'm going to start with what I do first. 3 is added to a number first, then the result is multiplied by 4, and then finally that result is decreased by 5. Right, so notice the difference between these ways of phrasing. Right, this is a phrase. Right, there's no verb there. This, on the other hand, is a story. Right, there are several sentences in which things happen one after another. The phrase reverses the order of operations. So, the operation that we did last, we named it first. The story, on the other hand, follows the order of operations. In the next video, we're going to be given descriptions of expressions and asked to write the expressions down. You may want to print off that list of phrases to describe expressions. I've posted that separately. You may want to print off that list and have it with you as you go on to watch the next video.